the question says which of the following molar relation in the primary dentition is most probably going to lead to a class 2 occlusion in the permanent dentition now we have been given three images okay image a b and c okay so these are the three types of molar relations that you are most likely to see in the primary dentition and we have been asked to identify which of these three is going to lead to a class 2 type of occlusion in the permanent dentition now the permanent molar relation Okay, the permanent molar relation is based on the angles classification of malocclusion where the mesiobuccal cusp of the maxillary first molar okay, is given the importance and that needs to fit into the buccal groove of the mandibular first molar. Okay, so this is the mandibular molar, this is the buccal groove. So the mesiobuccal cusp should fit into the buccal groove of the mandibular first molar. Okay, so this is angles class 1 relationship. If the mesiobuccal uh, cusp is going to fall ahead of the buccal groove, it is class 2. If it is going to be behind the buccal groove, it is class 3. Okay, so this is class 1. Right, so this is the uh, molar relationship in the permanent dentition on the basis of angles classification. But in the primary dentition, the molar relationship was given by Baum. Okay, this is again important and could be asked in the examination as a separate question. Now, Baum's uh, method of classification was based on something known as the terminal planes. Okay, terminal planes. That is the distal aspect of the maxillary and mandibular second deciduous molar. Okay, so second molar, that is the E. So, how he classified them was, if the distal surfaces... Okay, if the distal surfaces of the uh, maxillary uh, second mo molar and the mandibular second molar are in the same line, okay, they fall in the same line, this is known as a flush terminal plane. Okay, flush terminal plane. And this is the most common type of molar relationship that is seen in the deciduous dentition. So, this is seen in about 76% of the deciduous dentition. Okay, this again is an important question in the exam. So, the most common type of molar relationship will be the flush terminal plane. If the deciduous uh, mandibular second molar is slightly ahead or more mesial to the maxillary second deciduous molar, this will be known as the mesial step. Okay, so the nomenclature is based on the deciduous uh, mandibular deciduous second molar. Okay, so the terminal planes of both the maxillary and the mandibular are considered, but the nomenclature is based on the mandibular molar. So if the mandibular molar is more mesial in direction, then it's the mesial step. Okay, if the mandibular molar is more distal than the maxillary, it is known as distal step. Okay. So, here in the mesial step, the mandibular molar is slightly mesial. So, the terminal planes are not in the same line. Okay, So, the maxillary terminal plane is here, the mandibular terminal plane is here. So, there is a step that is formed. Okay, This is the mesial step because the mandibular molar is placed more mesially. Here in this diagram, this the terminal planes are again not in the same line. There is a step between them. But the mandibular molar is more distally placed as compared to the maxillary. That's why it's known as the distal step. Okay. Now, mesial step relationship is seen in about 14% of the population. And distal step is seen in about 10% of the population. Okay. So, the most common is the flush terminal, then the mesial step, and then the distal step. Now, as growth takes place, okay, there is two things that is going to happen. Firstly, the, there's going to be growth of the jaws. And secondly, there's going to be shifting of the teeth. Okay, so the, there is a mesial uh, direction of uh, movement of the teeth, which is usually seen in the arch. So there is a relationship that can be predicted on the basis of the primary molar relationship. So there's an approximate type of uh, relationship we can try to predict what it would be or what the occlusion is going to look like in the permanent dentition on the basis of the molar relationship in the primary dentition. So, for example, if there was a distal step, okay, if there was a distal step in the patient's, uh, in the in the occlusion of the child, okay, this distal step is either going to transform into a class 2 molar relationship if there is minimal. So, these arrows, okay, these color coordinated arrows, they, this is what they mean. If it is this solid blue arrow, 
okay it means there is minimal growth so if there is minimal growth that is taking place and the molars are only going to replace each other within the arch in the same position that they the deciduous molars were occupying right then without any growth they are going to occupy the same position so if there was a distal step where the maxillary molar was more mesially placed as compared to the mandibular molar the similar type of molar relation is going to be replicated in the permanent dentition which is going to result in a class 2 where the maxillary molar is ahead of the mandibular molar however if there is some amount of growth that is going to take place right if there is some amount of growth that is going to take place either because there is a forward growth of the mandible or there is a mesial shifting of the teeth okay especially when there is exchange of uh, permanently uh, utilizing the leeway space of nans so it could happen that the mandibular molar right could shift mesially so this is going to change the molar relationship from a class 2 or a distal step into a type of an end on relationship so depending upon the amount of growth a distal step relationship will either result in a class 2 okay by direct uh, repl uh, uh, replacement of the teeth or because of growth the molars can shift ahead and result in an end on type of a relationship okay now if the relationship was in a flush terminal plane which is the most common type of molar relation as we saw okay if there is minimal growth then the molars will remain in the same type of relationship that is in an end on relationship however again if there is going to be mesial movement of the mandibular molars it will result in a class one type of a relationship okay now similarly for a mesial step in mesial step the mandibular molar is ahead of the maxillary molar so in the permanent dentition this will result in a type of a class 1 relationship because uh, the buccal uh, the mesial buccal cusp right is fitting into the buccal groove however if there is going to be further mesial movement of the mandibular molar this will result in a class 3 type of a uh, molar relationship okay so a distal step will result either in a class 2 or an end on depending upon the amount of growth that is expected a flush terminal will result either in end on or class 1 and a mesial step will result either in class 1 or a class 3 type of a molar relationship now in our question we have been asked which of them will lead to class 2 type of a uh, occlusion right so class 2 occlusion is when there is distal step okay so distal step is when the mandibular molar is more distally placed as compared to the maxillary molar okay so this is seen only in a right so in a the mandibular molar is more distally placed as compared to the maxillary molar so this is the distal step right and a distal step will result in class 2 type of occlusion this is the flush terminal plane this will result in either class 1 uh, this will or an end on molar relationship and this is a mesial step which will result in either a class 1 type of a relationship or a class 3 type of a relationship